So when I was editing that last video that I just shared, taking down that cottonwood on the lake, I saw this guy I follow, Matt Brunati. He's on Instagram. He's right over the across the border from me in British Columbia. I saw he posted this video and I thought, man, it was an accident that happened at work. And I just thought, man, that ties in really well because I was actually worried about this exact thing happening when I was climbing this cottonwood. So I messaged Matt and I said, hey, could you send me that video? I'd really like to incorporate it into my YouTube video. He was like, sure, he sent it to me. And I was trying to squeeze it in the video, but it felt really awkward. So I decided I'll just leave this out of the video. But I thought there is a good lesson to learn here. So I figured I'd just make a really quick, real quick video ex sort of talking about what happened in this video that I saw. So I'll just play the clip in its entirety and then we'll talk about it a little bit. And come through. So really nice of Matt to send this to me and putting himself out there. I really like it when climbers post their mistakes, you know, because we all make them and it's good to help each other learn from them. So we'll just talk about this real quick and we'll start with talking a little bit about tension and compression. Now inside of every piece of wood, there is an invisible line where the tension and the compression wood, where they meet together that you can't see. And so, you know, imagine if a log is laying on its side, that the compression is going to be on the bottom side and the tension is going to be on top because the piece is wanting to go this way. So especially when it comes to trees that are growing at an extreme angle. Imagine a tree grows like this angle for many years, and now all of a sudden you sever all the weight up top. What can happen is where the tension and compression would meet, it can force them, sort of like tectonic plates shifting. That same thing can happen when you release that pressure, the tree can shift between where the tension and compression wood is, and it can cause it to open and split like that. So, and that, ha and that seems to happen when you remove a large amount of weight very quickly. So you see, I'm climbing this cottonwood. First, I have to sort of disentangle it out of the tree that it's growing underneath. They're sort of tied up together. But there comes a point where I can take the top. It will fit, it will clear, but you see this sort of sprout coming up the side. You'll notice I actually tie into that and I reach out and I cut the bigger section, the bigger top off sort of past this knuckle right here. Now, this was pretty deliberate. I, I could have actually cut the top right below where that fork is rather than moving my lanyard up and tying into that skinny upright piece. But, you know, you can see I, I did this for a reason and that's because I was worried about this thing splitting because it's a ton of weight out really far and I don't want it to, well, it happened in a couple pieces, right? It tore out. So, so you actually see that happens right here. This thing is leaning like crazy and I cut it and it does tear out, but the tree can't really tear out that much when you're right above a knuckle or a union, something like that. If you've ever tried splitting wood, then you know if you try chopping an ax through this stuff, it doesn't split apart easily because it's all, you know, all the, the branches and the wood where the unions are, they really twist together and really hold each other. So the tree can't really split out so easily. If you look at Matt's branch, this is a long, smooth, skinny branch, no, no knuckles or anything and it just splits apart, just like you're chopping a piece of wood, really smooth right down the center. So in, in this case, I climb here and I tie into this little noodly scraggly thing and then I reach out and I cut the bigger leader off because I'm worried about this thing splitting out like crazy. And that would possibly, that would be more likely to happen if I cut it below where that union is, where that wood grain is really straight. So instead, I went out a little further and I've talked about it a lot. I think that uh, not always, but oftentimes a small top is a safe top. And really a big contributing factor to that is how much weight are you removing that quickly from a piece? So I actually worked with a guy one time and he was climbing an alder. Alders aren't very strong wood, sort of similar, you know, the, neither is this willow that Matt was climbing, but alders not very strong wood and it leaned out like that. So it's really awkward. He's standing on the backside of it. He's reaching around with his top handle, making a face cut and he can't really see what he's doing. And it's this sort of, it's real jagged looking. 
and we're just watching and it's a it's a large alder top above him and all of a sudden he goes back cut and he sticks a saw in the back and i thought he was going to clean up the face more and he didn't but i don't know if that really made much of a difference honestly so he starts the back cut and all that weight shifting at once it splits off and he's got his flip line around the trunk you know some people call it a lanyard and it was crazy so we're on the ground and me and the guys on the ground we actually heard as this thing splits apart we heard my friend who's up in the tree we heard <gasps> like you could hear all of the oxygen leaving his lungs because the tree was pushing you know his flip line this way and his chest this way eventually the top went down and the you know the pressure relieved and he was able to breathe again but he was real shook up it was it was kind of a horrifying sound honestly i've never <laughs> never heard a sound like it but there was no mistaking what it was as you heard it so that that's barber chairing that's you know these things splitting apart and you know this is it's hard to say right because i'm watching this video that matt shared this is a two-dimensional video i can't really see the tree i know it looks different in real life and i'm trying to speculate you know what he should have done or what he could have done differently and it's hard to say there are different ways that you could maybe cut it so this doesn't happen but i really just you know i am confident in explaining why I, I believe that it split apart but it's harder to say what he could have done in the situation you know this is a good example where it might have been safer for him to not be tied into that stem, you know, just, be, well, <laughs> it would have been safer for him not to be tied into that stem, you know. Usually you want to be double tied in, that way if you cut yourself you can get to the ground or you don't fall to the ground if you cut your rope, you know, but in this situation you sort of have to balance it. He probably would have been safer just having his climbing line tied up there. Yeah, it increases the odds that he'll cut that and he'll fall to the ground, but it also decreases the odds that the piece will you know, <laughs> we'll do what it did, but we'll push him like crazy. Another trick that I like to do when I feel like I might, I don't really want to be committed to the piece that much, sometimes I'll take a little accessory carabiner, you know, it's only good for like 100 pounds or something, and I'll clip that to my flip line and that to my D-ring so I can get comfortable positioning, I can lean against it, but if there's an emergency, that will snap off, you know. So, you know, and, and a lot of times, a lot of guys too, they'll use ratchet straps, try to hold the trees together. It's crazy, you, you can cut like 150 foot fur in half and you'll be fine, nothing will happen usually because you've got all that weight pushing straight down. So when the top goes over, you know, nothing's really changing that much on the stem. But when a tree grows like this, you know, this is how the wood wants to be oriented. So when you relieve all that pressure, it doesn't know where to go or what to do. So a lot of times it snaps. This one time I was climbing a cottonwood and uh, you know, in Washington and it was a crane removal and it was crazy, this leader went out like this and I cut it, it was a crane pick, so the pick came off really smoothly. So nothing snapped or popped beneath me. And I was sitting on the stem waiting for the crane to come back to me. And a couple minutes had gone by and all of a sudden, boom, the, the trunk just splits apart, you know? Um, it, it, nothing crazy, but enough to really scare me. It startled me. And uh, luckily I, I, was, I had my climb line cinched against it and I was sort of resting in my climb line you know, wrapped around the trunk rather than just on my flip line. And that seemed to actually kind of hold it together a little bit. So it didn't feel it on my flip line. So another good reason to be double tied in sometime. Yeah, almost always good to be double tied in, but maybe it would have been a little better if Matt wasn't <laughs> tied into that one. That was crazy. Another thing is I think he was pruning and wasn't using spikes. And so he didn't have as many places to stand. I think he was sort of making the best of what he could do, it's really hard to tell from the video what the best way to do it is. So I really don't, he's a really good climber. I don't want to say like what he should have done. I'm just trying to sort of bring awareness to what can happen. And it's unexpected, but it happens quickly. And you know, it's happened to all of us. Sometimes you can be chunking a tree down and it leans like this and even removing the weight slowly, you'll still feel it pop and crackle as you work your way down. That A lot of times that freaks the new climbers out. They don't really expect it, but it's actually kind of common, you know? And that's just because the tree it doesn't know what to do now. It's grown a certain way and it's trying to get back to, I don't know, it's just trying to be in a different shape. So thanks for sending me this, Matt. I know that was kind of long-winded, but you know, I just really wanted to talk about that. And I, and I didn't talk about it while I was in the cottonwood tree because it's actually pretty hard for me to talk to my camera explaining what I'm doing while I'm working, especially when I'm sort of stressed out and really trying to focus. So it, it, that is exactly what I was picturing happening in that cottonwood. You know, I kept talking about how nervous I was. It's like, Ugh, I'm nervous. And that's because the top's tangled up. So I got to, there's a lot of reasons to be nervous. That hanger was resting on a big branch. I didn't want that breaking and falling and hitting me. And I didn't want it. Um, but there was like a whole bunch of factors, but I, I was really worried about cutting a bunch of weight really quickly and being on a long, smooth piece of trunk 
I at least want to go up and cut it ab above knuckles and branch collars and stuff because those are really strong points in the trunk. And, uh, and back, back to my friend who cut that alder top, um, you know, the, the way that could have been avoided was just by climbing higher and cutting it. I think it had multiple tops in it, so we could have just cut them like one at a time up there and you know that wouldn't have happened it wouldn't have split apart like that and in my experience this sort of thing i think is most likely to happen when you're right in the middle of something you know if you're real close to the trunk then you've got the real strong structural integrity behind you and if you're real far at the tip then you've got light weight in front of you but if you're right in the middle that seems to be where you know in my experience if you're like cutting a tree in half that seems to be when the tree moves the most or a branch, same thing, tree or branch. When you cut it in the middle, that seems to be the most violent, just in my experience. I've heard crazy stories. I don't know if this is true or not, but you know, I've heard stories of guys being, you know, out in the woods doing huge trees and it actually opening up and closing back and like crushing people before. I don't know if that's true. I, I could kind of see it happening if it was a sufficiently large tree. So. Anyways, that's all real long-winded, but so as you can see, I didn't really know where to squeeze talking about this into that video. So just trying to bring awareness to barber chairing stuff while you're climbing. Try to relieve that weight slowly, you know, try to climb out as far as you can. I don't think Matt could get any further out because he didn't have spikes. And, you know, sometimes I've been in a situation where I reach out with a pole saw, just trying to relieve some weight before I make a big cut like that. And, you know, maybe you can put in the comments what kind of cuts you think, you know, he could have done. I'm sure there's a way to cut that so that it wouldn't have split like crazy, but I'm very hesitant to, you know, say what he could have done differently. Honestly, I probably would, the same exact thing probably would have happened to, to, to me if I were in that tree. So anyways, if you like that, please like and subscribe. The subscriptions really mean a lot to me. I'd appreciate it. Let me know if you like that video, if you'd want to see me, um, you know, if, if you like that, I can look at, you know, other safety fail video stuff and, re, you know, give my thoughts on that if you liked it. So anyways, check out my shirt. I got a branch manager shirt now on my website, guiltyoftreason.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sending me that video, Matt, and be safe, and I'll see you guys later.